welcome back to the channel I had to get out of my office I'm lucky enough to be working from home but I had to take a break and enjoy the sunshine so between the uh, Sun and uh, spring coming to Newfoundland ATVs going up and down my street um, things to look forward to spring getting outside not being stuck in the house get outside and enjoy some of that sunny weather um, I've teamed up with Bob at time to go travel and time pieces for a giveaway Bob has already done a review of the watch it's a Mercure 70s type of chronograph um, so head on over check out the video on his side and then keep watching on my channel here uh, that watch is on route to me via Canada Post once I get it here, I'm going to pop it open, do a review, and then myself and Bob are going to figure out how we'd like to do the giveaway. So stay tuned, enjoy a couple of uh, watch reviews, subscribe, make sure you're subscribed. That's definitely going to be one of the keys to this giveaway. Uh, we want to make it easy and fun and uh, give someone something to look forward to uh, right now during these crazy, crazy times. All right. Enjoy. Thanks. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for returning. If you're new here, my name is Jamie. And this is my watch channel where I vent about watches, I talk into a camera, and somewhere on the backside of all of this, you're watching it through YouTube. Trying to get the light. So, right now in the middle of all of this COVID-19 madness, I'm sat talking about watches from time to time. But, a little bit of a public service announcement, stay safe out there, take all the necessary precautions, take care of yourself and your family, and maybe these watch talks can serve as a bit of a distraction from time to time. Between Netflix and Disney and Bell Canada... I believe there's lots of extra shows to binge on. Maybe you'll take the time to binge on some of my shows here on YouTube. All right. The two Seikos on the right are mine. The two Seikos on the left are not. They were lent in by Mr. P. A generous lending of two gorgeous watches. Uh, let's see if I can remember what they all are. This is a Seiko SDS-101. The model number is 7002-7039, early 90s. We've got a Seiko... There you go. Seiko SRP-777J-1. My own collection. It did not come in this strap. It came on a rubber. A standard rubber uh, strap, dive strap from Seiko. Uh, this is a strap code. If I double back, it's a strap code Miltat uh, that I just recently purchased. And then we've got here, I know I've already forgotten it. It is a Seiko Professional. Oh my, here we go. Seiko Professional Patty here we go, 300M. It is the Seiko Prospects Seiko Tuna. Let's see if I can get the model number off of the back of it. Yeah, I can't. It's on my phone. Hidden somewhere inside my phone. This was a limited edition piece. It is number 282 of 700. The going, uh, the current price on one of those is about $18.95 Canadian. That's manufacturer's uh, suggested. Retail price. 
Let's see. I must have its model number written somewhere. There I guess I do. S B B N 039. Um move on to the next. This is this Seiko Marine Master 300 m So again a Seiko Prospects. Seiko Prospects. So Seiko Professional lineup. Automatic professional 300 meter dive watch with the monocoque case. This is the blue SLA 023J1 with a manufacturer suggested retail price of $38.95 Canadian. So that's a serious chunk of coin. So for this evening's video, the first one, I want to do some comparisons between these watches. I am removing the SDS and the Tuna. And let's talk about comparisons of Turtles. Um, out of the four I have, these are the most two uh, alike uh, Turtles. So, instantly with, um, with this portion of the review, this is all anecdotal. I'm not going to go through the differences in uh, uh, actual technical specifications. But we are going to talk about it in the world of anecdotal, you know, my feelings, the things I can see visually that are different. And so let's just zoom in a little bit, adjust them right here. So I've not set the time on them, guys. Not worth doing sometimes. So a couple of things I notice immediately between this roughly uh, 500 550 Canadian dollars and $3,800. Let's go inside and work our way out. So the movement uh, is quite different between these two. So I had to go check that out. But the movement is a 4R36. And this one is the 8L35. Uh, so you can look those up online. See pictures, uh, accuracy, differences. And then if we started moving outside, let's start with the crown. We have one with a signed crown, one with an unsigned crown. Let's see. There we go. So at $400 on the right, unsigned crown. $4,000 on the left, you get a signed crown. So it's not very deep etching. So now from this perspective, zoom out just a little. Applied indices on the left, all the markers are applied. On the right, printed with loom, dropped on. And you can see day and date. You can see just date. Let's see if I can get a pointer for these things. Here we go. So you can see the loom sort of puffy on this one, but definitely not applied indices. On the SLA 023, it's all applied indices. And each one, the framework of the framing of each indice is uh, in a gilt dot, um, coloring, sort of a gold gilt coloring. Um, the finishes look amazing on the SLA. And next to finish is perfect alignment of indice to chapter ring to bezel insert. Here we have not such a perfect alignment. So if I move these in, you can see the inner chapter ring does not, it's just slightly to the right of the sword, sort of the sword in the steel there in the marker, the sword to the bezel. I can move the bezel too much, I think. Oh my, let's try this, bring it all the way around. There we go. 
So it's not quite the same level of uh, finish as the SLA. And then Loom. Loom is truly amazing on the SLA. And as good as the Loom is on the Turtle on the SRP777, it is nothing compared to the SLA023. And I'll show you that at the end of the video. The finishes. So this one has the Zoratsu polishing with dye shield coating for an extremely tough coating and resistance to scratching and marking. This one has no dye shield, just a nice polish here with brushing on the surfaces facing up here. So, again, 400, 4,000. That's quite a bit of difference uh, in your pocket. Between the movement, the gilt, the ceramic bezel insert, the Zeratsu and die shield, my understanding is that the Zeratsu polishing is done by hand. That's a lot of workmanship, uh, craftsmanship, uh, that's being performed at uh, Seiko. $4,000 new. Um, nope. I don't believe it's worth $4,000. That's a significant chunk of change. Um, closer to, I think what we're seeing on the used market right now is 25 to 3. Um, Maybe there. I'd be okay with it. But at $4,000, um, I'm trying to understand why that's a $4,000 piece. So, $400. In the world of $400, I can get micro brands with better specs than this Seiko at $400. So, again, why? Hardlex Crystal. This one does have the sapphire. Aluminum bezel insert. Sapphire, or uh, ceramic bezel insert, sorry. So that's quite a bit of difference um, and just food for thought. So a couple of gorgeous watches, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love my Turtle. Uh, that one's in my collection for a very long time. That's staying with me. This is Lentian. Uh, if you've got the coin, I'm speaking from a position of not having that kind of money. And I look at that at $4,000 and think, ooh, I could squeeze out a little bit more because I love a Panerai. But for the Seiko lover, this is cream of the crop until you start getting into Grand Seiko. So, there you go.